Welcome back to the Immigration Answers Show. I am Jim Hacking. My trusted sidekick, Daniel, is feeling a little under the weather, so it will just be me today. I hope you all are well. I'm excited to be here. Um, I need a haircut. Hopefully I'll get a haircut tomorrow, but we're expecting a big snowstorm in St. Louis. Everybody's freaking out. The bread and toilet paper and milk lines are all very long at Schnucks these days. I drove by Schnucks, the grocery store, yesterday, and people were completely freaking out. Hope you all are doing well. It's the first day of February. Going to be a great month. We're not going to go live every single day in February, but we plan on going live a lot of the days. And we have some exciting things coming for the channel and for all of you going along with our goal to help as many immigrants as we can. We're going to answer as many immigration questions as we can in the month of February. I'm probably going to start doing less uh, of my recorded videos. In fact, I might be moving my studio around. Um, so we'll probably go live four or five days a week and then just drop a video on the days that we are not live. Um, I'll probably go live more often during the week and, and probably Sunday and then take the weekends off. Um, I hope you all liked the month that we were together. Um, I certainly did. I think a lot of people got a lot out of it and we're going to keep, keep the fun rolling this month. Um, glad to see where people are watching. Got, got a crew down in Atlanta, got people in Ghana watching Atlanta's boy. We got a following in Atlanta. It's funny because I'm coming to Atlanta April 1st. That'll be fun. Um, okay. So I started talking the other day about an article I read in the New Yorker where a progressive pro-immigrant lady sort of got frustrated with the Biden administration because the people at the very top, the Alejandro Mayorkas's, the Cynthia Munoz's, these kind of people that Biden surrounded himself with on immigration, these are the most conservative Democrats on immigration that you could come across. So. I know a lot of people are getting frustrated and they're wondering to themselves why or when are things going to change? And so far they haven't. Well, this lady quit because she's so frustrated with um, the fact that nobody is fixing things at USCIS. These are really lackadaisical, really. Um, they don't, they're very worried about the politics of immigration. They don't want to be soft on immigrants. So they just are just a milder version of Donald Trump. Um, obviously, they don't have that hatred, at least the express hatred for immigrants that Trump did. Oh, my, we've got someone in Botswana watching. That's exciting. Um, here's the link to come on the show. Um, we'd love to answer your questions. And remember, folks, if you're in the waiting room, um, you got to be on camera. Or I, I can't pull you up. I'm not going to pull you up. So, all right, there's the link. Suna is here. Hi, Suna. You're on mute. You're our first guest of oh. February 24, 2022. Hello, hello, Jim. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm pretty good. Um, I have a question. So I received my master's degree in the United States, North Carolina State University, in nine, uh, 2019. Well, so I spent two and a half years there. But during my stay in the last year, I met my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So we spent eight months together in the United States. Since I was on J1 visa, I had to come back come back to Turkey and, you know, yeah, two years and I spent two years here. So I'm done. Uh, but now, you know, I wanted to continue my career in the United States and I applied for a PhD. So if that happens, like I'm going to be starting starting the school like in August. But with my boyfriend, uh, we got engaged like last April in U.S. because we have been visiting each other. Like I visited him like twice and he visited me in Turkey once. OK, so this this is apparently I mean, you know, like the, our plan, like in the coming future. So my question is, like, would it be um, risky, like for our like marriage, like because I'm going to be on a F1? during my, you know, like a PhD program? That's the first question. Mm -hmm. And the second, oh, I mean, you can, I don't know, you want to answer and then I can continue. So, okay. So the question is, um, you know, are you going to 
have trouble getting your F1 or what, what, what are you, where, where do you, where are you worried about things sort of falling out of the way? Uh, no, I mean, I applied for like a PhD program. So right now, you know, I'm waiting for, I mean, hearing from them. They are still okay. like, you know, they're looking at the applications. Cool. But so assume you get into a school and they issue an I-20 and then you go to the embassy to get an F-1 visa, right? Yeah. Because you're going yes, to have to get a stamp in your passport, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct. Yeah. <clears throat> the problem is right now they're sitting on a lot of those. There's no guarantee that you're going to be able to get it. I hope and think you probably will. But mm -hmm. I can tell you story after story about people who had an I-20, went to the embassy, wanted to come to the United States, and the embassy said, yeah, we don't feel like giving you a visa. Oh. So that's one problem. But then the other problem is if you were to come on an F-1 and then eventually get married, I think that's okay. Are, are you going to get married like the day you arrive? Are you talking about a year later or, or what? Oh, I mean, not the day I arrive, maybe like a couple months later, but I saw like there, there's a 90 days like rule or something, right? Yeah, I would wait. I, I mean, if you're coming on an F1, I would wait six months or so. I wouldn't be any in any real rush. I mean, the F1, oh, okay. I, I assume that if you get married, you're going to keep going with your PhD. Yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah, so yeah. I would just, I would focus on that. Um, I would focus on that and um, then just sort of let things develop naturally here in the United States. Don't be in a big hurry. And then, you know, you're going to be in school for two years or however long it takes for a PhD. So, you know, then cool. you get married whenever you want and then file for a green card. Okay. So it's going to be fine. It seems like after I that. So. Yeah. I mean, okay. let's just, let's fast forward a year from now. You enter the United States in September and you come to me in January of 2023 and say, Jim, we got married. I, I entered in February. I just got married in January. Can we file for my green card? I'd be, yeah, sure. Happens all oh, the time. Okay. okay. Thanks, Suna. Oh, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to take like anyone. Oh, else. you're fine. Go ahead. Go, you got another uh, question? Go for it. Another, another question is like, um, like, you know, like what if like that PhD thing like didn't happen? Like what it, what it, um, uh, be the best option for me to, you know, move to U.S. and like, you know, continue my career and also like, you know, get married like my fiance. Well, so that's a whole other question. So you're saying if the Ph.D. falls through, if you can't get the F1 or if the schools don't accept you. Yeah, I would probably have your fiance file a fiance visa. Fiance visa. Mm -hmm. OK. Or or come back and get married. I, I don't know if they're going to give you a visit visa. You're already here on a J1. They probably won't give you a visit visa because you're young and of a marrying age. And so I think the chances of getting the visit visa are probably sort of small, especially if it's after you tried to get an F. So because then then you get into this place where they sort of think you're desperate to come to the United States and you're just doing whatever you can. And you don't want to sort of set up oh. that you don't want to set up that immigration record when you have sort of, you know, a, a legit marriage down the line. Why, why do you want to make it all muddy with F1s, B1s and all that other stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah I understand. OK. OK, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have thank a good you. day. Sure you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. All right, let's talk to Laity. Hi, Laity. Hi. Um, hello. Hi. How are you? Can you hear me? I'm good. I can. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, so I came in earlier, but um, one day, but I, I, I did not have the opportunity to get in just because I was late. Um, I'm an OPT right now. Um, I, of course, I'm an F1. And, um, uh, I have two questions actually, um, because I I'm in between my company sponsoring me, and because I'm married to an American, I'm trying to see which one uh, should I go ahead in terms of the immigrations. Should I I mean should I pick in terms of the immigrations uh, to help me also move forward in my work authorization and all of that? Because so you went you went to school for two or four years and then you fin you graduated and then you went on OPT. Yes, and then I went on OPT. And then I just and, got married recently. So my company was thinking about sponsoring me, but now I'm in between because I'm married to an American. Which one is the best way to wait for the the, the work authorizations? Like which one so, should I go with the yeah. When does your OPT expire? Uh, end of August of this year. 
Okay, so I would if you, I would file for my green card right away. I mean, it's, it's so much cleaner, and you're gonna your your employer sponsoring you. That's just for an H one B. That's for that's for a non immigrant visa, and so um, you don't that doesn't get you nearly as much as a green card with a work card based on marriage. It's just so much cleaner, and it's so much more solid than coming on the um, having your employer try to sponsor you for an H one B. Sometimes I've even had people say, hey, employer, you want to sponsor me for an H-1B? That's going to cost you $5,000. Why don't you help me pay for my green card? Um, some employers will do that. Some employees don't want to have that conversation, but you know that's something they can do. But the H-1B program is so much more of a headache and a risk and an uncertain thing, both for you and the employer, where if you have a valid marriage, it's just much more straightforward to do it um, through the green card route. Okay, so I, I did some research on the marriage side, and I saw that there is three forms. There's the I-130, there is, I think, the I-485, and I think the I-765 for work authorization. Since I'm already on OPT, I remember that I had filed for it before. Should I go straight only with the one for the green card, or, or should I do the one with the I-765? So let's let's do it like this. So when you file based on marriage, you're going to file the I-130 petition. That's the petition by the U.S. citizen saying I want to sponsor laity for a green card. Laity is going to fill out the I-130A, which is the background biographical information about you. The I-45, which is the green card application. The I-765, which is the work authorization. And the I-131, which is the travel document. You're also going to need to submit the affidavit of support, which is the um, I-864, right? Um, and so that's where your spouse promises that if you get government benefits, they'll pay them back. Your spouse has to make 125% of the poverty guidelines for the last three years. Those are all the forms. Now, the question about whether or not you should go ahead and do the EAD from OPT or the EAD from the green card, the answer to that question is both. Do both. The EAD that you do for the marriage-based green card is included in the filing fee. So it doesn't cost you anything else. So it's better to just have both things going. It's not gonna screw things up. Just go ahead, file a complete I-130, 45 package with all those forms that I mentioned. And then you'll, you might end up with two work cards, but probably you'll just get a green card and you don't, you don't need to be worried about it. Oh, I'm actually an OPT extension, which is the last part of the OPT. So I was just asking, of a way to extend that work authorization more because uh, this is the last i mean i can't i can't extend the opt anymore i can just apply for the i-765 so i should just go ahead and apply for another i-765 is there any deadline on is it 90 days before it expires that i have to do it or uh is there any other rules so, on so that? when did you when did you when did you graduate from school 2019. And what kind of a degree did you have? Chemical engineering. So you had one year and then you, now you're on your two year STEM extension. Yes. yes. And your yes, question to me, companies. yeah, your question to me about the 90 days is, is, is there a deadline? I mean, that's not what you need to be thinking about. What you need to be thinking about is how long is it going to take me to get my EAD based on the green, based on the green card application? And the answer to that is, you know, you're going to take six months. So you need to file that as soon as possible. You need to hurry. You need to hurry up a little bit. Oh, OK. OK. And I can do that anytime. Right. That that was my question. Because you're, you're, le you're, right. you're legally married. Yes. The marriage has already happened. Yeah. Then you can do it tomorrow. Yes. Oh, I can do it. OK. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. All Good right. luck. Yep. For sure. Something's going on with her sound. I don't know what that was sort of driving me crazy. Let me post the link in case anyone wants to join. And we're going to talk to Tamir. Hi, Tamir. Hi, Jim. How are you today? Good. How are you doing? Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for uh, for answering, for having me. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Sure. Um, uh, let me go ahead and um, tell me about myself. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, wondering about my situation. I was uh, deported from USA in 2013. I went there by J1 uh, J1 visa internship program. 
Uh, I did my uh, internship program in overstate. I, I like more than one year, I guess. And um, it has been t- nine years already. Uh, my first question is, should I wait another one year and uh, then apply for any kind of visa? Or like, uh, should I do like waiver visa, like 601? Um, it's the first question. And, wait, uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What visa were you hoping to get? Um, you mean now, if I if I apply for uh, this, this is the second question. Uh, I, the, fir- I, I the, was... the, fir- the first question is so whenever someone's deported, the one thing they always forget about is what's my new way of coming into the United States. So forget about the fact that you were ever in the United States. Forget about the fact that you were deported. What is the way that you're you're planning on coming to the United States? Uh, to be honest, I have a girlfriend. Um, I mean, uh, we talk, and uh, I, I'm not sure yet uh, if we're gonna get married or no. It's uh, one of the options. Um, I mean, if if, it, if everything goes well, I mean, we will get married, and uh, then we will apply for um, spouse uh, visa. And the second thing I was wondering about H1B visa and uh, business visa. I I, I own my uh, few restaurants here, and uh, I would like to open another restaurant in United States. If I I mean, like, if I buy the place, like, and uh, and if I do all that, how how long it takes totally, like, uh, and how much it will cost if I uh, hire you, uh, Jim? Like, and um, I mean, how it's gonna work? I mean, so so let's 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 talk about non-immigrant visas and immigrant visas, right? So non-immigrant visas, you're gonna come and visit and hang out and leave on time, right? So that would be a B1, an F1, or maybe an investor visa, okay, where you come and work yeah. and start a business. Yeah. I think the chances of somebody who's been deported for overstaying a non-immigrant visa of the chances of them getting another non-immigrant visa is about 5%. So I don't think anyone's ever going to give you a non-immigrant visa. After even 10 years, Ben? Yeah, you didn't follow the rules. Uh-huh. You didn't follow so the rules. Mean, why, are we gonna, I mean, why, are we, why are they going to give you another visa if the last time they gave you a visa, you didn't follow the rules? Why would they do that? Yeah, but I was paying. I mean, oh, I I understand it's, it doesn't count maybe, but I was paying all the taxes all the time, even when I was like. Um, so what? You didn't follow the rules. Yeah, yeah. So so I mean, the question. So I have no any chance like uh, to coming back. I mean, if there any chance like how it will work like and uh, like what I want to come back like let's put that question. I'm sure you way, do. Yeah. I'm sure you yeah, do. But, so but how? And what I'm saying is, on a non-immigrant visa, I think you have a 95 percent chance of not coming. You can try it. I don't do non-immigrant visas. Most non-immigrant visas are denied. So why they would give, if most are denied, why would they bend over backwards to give one to somebody who already didn't follow the rules? So if I, if I marry even like a U.S. citizen. So that's an immigrant visa. That's the I other, immigrant that's, visa. Yeah. that's the other part yeah. I want to talk about. Yeah. So if, yeah, 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 yeah. if you were to marry yeah, a U.S. citizan, yeah, I understand. I understand. Now if, I you understand. Got, if you got married right now and applied you know, that's going to take at least a year to work itself out. So your 10 years will be up. So hopefully you won't need a waiver. You'll probably need to explain it. They'll probably give you some grief at the embassy, yeah. but you'll have done your time. And I yeah, think yeah. that that's realistic. That's something to focus on. That's something that's approvable. But yeah. I would I would not even waste my time trying to get a non-immigrant visa. That was the point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And another question. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope I'm not taking a long time. You're fine. Um, Take your time. The um, waiting room is relatively open. Okay, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, another question is, Jim, I just want to be honest with you. Uh, like uh, options like people are, who is going like uh, through the asylum uh, case, like uh, they're like going through the border and like not passing the border illegally. They're just passing uh, border and saying like, uh, where's for asylum? Like uh, if if it works like that, like uh, do you think like if I hire you after they, after I say like I have asylum, obviously I'm going to go to detention like for, I don't know for how long. I mean, four, how five, it's going to work. Five or six months. Oh, really? Yeah. Like I, I vote no on this plan. Uh, five to six months. Because right now, I mean, the, the Biden, they say like a lot of people just uh, two days, three days. I mean, two weeks, some some uh, some people one month, but most most cases, in most cases, like 10 days, 15 days, like they're letting out people. I don't know who's told you that. That's not what I'm hearing. I'm hearing four months, five months, three months. Even if I hire you and uh, we go through the asylum, right? Mm-hmm. So what what would be, what would be the uh, best uh, suggestion or like uh, or like should I go just uh, I should forget about non-immigrant visas? 
H1B, F1Bs, J1, J1, whatever are they? Um, the I mean, if, if, I, if I if I were an immigration officer at a at a consulate, I would not give you a, a non-immigrant visa. No way. I mean, what happens if what happens if I'm let's say let's say that I'm I'm a consular official wherever you live and Uzbekistan. Yeah, you okay? So I'm a, I I am working at the consulate in Uzbekistan, and in comes Tamir, and Tamir Tamir is applying for another J1 or a B1 B2, and I am asked to give him this visa, and I know because he had to say it in his DS-160 that he was in the United States before, that he overstayed, yeah. and then he got deported, right? So I know that for a fact. So am I going to put my neck on the line? Am I going to say, oh, yeah, Tamir, here's another visa when I have to explain it to my boss if you overstay again? No way. Even it's like 12 years past, 15 years past, it doesn't matter. Still, I'm going to be on record. Tamir, like, here, uh... you know, let's do this. You go try. Go try next year. No, 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 no. no, no, no I, I, I just think it's a waste this, of money. It's yeah, a waste of money. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's uh, the options are to, like uh, just to make sure for myself too, like uh, asylum and the spouse, right? And I Am hate I the asylum plan. So yeah, the spouse is the way I would go. Spouse I don't know why you. Way, yeah. I don't know why you'd mess around with asylum if you have a legitimate marriage. I mean, it's we are getting there, but uh, you know, like I can't. Uh, you know, it's life. Like you don't know like what's gonna happen. That's um, okay. We are we are working on it. Um, you know how it is, and uh, that's why. And uh, and another question is um, how much it will cost like if I hire you and we start from uh, like this spouse. Let's say like uh, I decided uh, we we got married. Like uh, the question is how it will work. Should she, she come over to my country or we should meet somewhere? And uh, how how much how much that will uh, it will cost like if if I work with you and how long yeah. it will take? Government government fees are going to spend about a thousand. My fees are are usually five thousand, but because you got deported, I would probably charge extra. So you're probably talking. Seven thousand, seventy-five hundred bucks. In total. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, I pay like seven, let's say seven, seven, uh, seven hundred. I mean, eight thousand bucks, and yeah. like in total, you're gonna take the case uh, from the, from start till the end. Right. And right. Uh, like, how, how it will work? Like, she will come. We got married, and then uh, like and then, uh, she, then then you can apply. Mm -hmm. and then we can apply, right? Okay, thank you, thank you very much, Jim. You right, have bye, a great Jimmy. day. Bye, bud. I really appreciate you it. Later. Thank you. You got it. All right. So listen, we got a question from one of our favorite guests, our favorite viewers. Mariana had her green card interview yesterday. I think it was in Atlanta, and her interview was not recorded. And Mariana's wondering, is that normal? And the answer to that question is yes, that's normal. They usually don't record the interview, and in fact. I would say that the fact that the interview was not recorded would be a good sign, not a bad sign. A good sign, not a bad sign. So, Mariana, I hope it went well. If that's the biggest question you have, I'm trusting that things went well. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Keep us posted. All right. Rom's here. Hi, Rom. What's up, Jim? How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Good. I got a question for you. Um, okay. Say, for example, someone came to the States – with an immigrant visa, get stems, get in, uh, uh, stem, enters the U.S. A couple of weeks later, a person leaves the country because that person has an elderly parent, and, the, and that parent is in the 90s, is about 90 plus years old, really old, is having a, ha has a stage four lung cancer, and that person now wants to apply for an I-131. Uh, re-entry permit green card. He does not have this uh, green card in the wait, hand. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So this person got a green, got, how did this person enter the United States? They got a green card? Immigrant visa. So they get an immigrant visa, mom gets sick, they go back home right away. Dad, no, dad gets sick. Dad, dad gets is sick. sick. Did they have their green card in their hand? Nope. Okay, so when, when did this all go down? December. So just a month ago. Exactly. Okay, so the 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 I five five one in the stamp on the password, they should be able to re-enter. With the I five five one, that because you see, here's the thing: immigrant visa is a single entry visa. So if that person, if that person re-enter with that, I think so. Really? I think so. Yeah, because um, the issue here on the, you see, it's I mean, 
type of, I mean, just saying, you know, B1, B2s, F1s, all, uh, the no, tourist no, visas. Who, who, sponsored, who sponsored them for the green card? Was uh, it a spouse or what? No, my uncle sponsored my mom. And, uh, uncle sponsored mom and, and a husband. And then, you, so is this husband, person... uh, husband of the, uh, let's say, say brother, can pretty much say brother in law is a U.S. citizen. Okay, so Mr. X, his brother sponsors him for an immigrant visa. It takes forever, freaking 20 years. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. Mr. Mr. X is the, is the brother in law. Mr. X sponsors uh, Mr. X's sister. Mr. Y is the husband of the sister. Oh, man, my head hurts. Um, okay, let's start over. So there's this guy. Uh -huh. He's living overseas. Oh. He's living and he's, he has some relative here in the United States. Is, that's his sister or his brother? Okay. The person, his, uh, brother -in -law, his brother in law. Right, right, right. You got it. You got it. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So Mr. X is overseas. His brother in law sponsors them, them, he sponsors Mr. X's wife and Mr. X for an immigrant visa. They come to the United States after waiting all these years. All the damn years, yeah. Then dad gets sick. And so right after. Mr. X arrives in the United States. He turns around and goes overseas. That's right. No, no. It's about four weeks, three, four weeks after I brought it. Had he paid his Ellis fee? Done. He did? Done. And no green card has shown up in the mail? No green card. So, but he, he got his social, though. Did he come, did he, Mr. X and his wife come together? Yep, that did. Did, did Mrs. X stay in the United States or did she go back home? Um, uh, wife is in the states. Did she get her green card? Still waiting on it. When's his plan on coming back now? Seriously, say say, say in about say in about a month and a half, two months, okay. hypothetically. So this is the this is the the case of the got my green card a little too early, right? That's the thing. Like if I could have only stayed a little bit longer than things, I, I think you can use that 551 more than one time in the stamp mm. in the password. I think, I don't know that for sure. Yeah. You think I'm wrong? <sighs> Great question. Uh, I really don't know because on that IV, on that immigrant visa, it says single entry. <laughs> what country? Uh, all the way out in uh, Singapore. Oh, well, this is a good question. I mean, we can we can poke around a little bit, and I can, I should know the answer to that question. I should be able to answer that. If you send us an email, I'll, I'll look it up. But um, this might be something. There's another thing called an SR uh, S S one an S one SB one. Yeah, where you see how you know better than I do. Um, we have had people sort of turning leave. resident visa. Yeah, that I think that's probably what he wants to apply for. Wait, um, because he here's the thing. He had a friend who went to the same path. That friend also left the country about four weeks early, but that friend did not have an emergency whatsoever. He just left. Yeah. He had his green card mailed from the U.S. to his country, and then when and then he applied with the I-131. He applied for the I-131, and he took he took his biometrics. At the U.S. Embassy itself, you can try that. I mean, I was that. That's why I was asking about Mrs. X. You might just wait and see when Mrs. X gets her green card, but I don't know if that's going to be, you know, before or after he wants to come back. What the, okay, so I have another question. Do, will USCIS will USCIS still print the green card even though he has left the country without having the green card in hand? I that I don't know. In the old days, they did, but now I don't know because they've been they've gotten more sophisticated in knowing when people are in and out of the United States. Okay. Um, if they ask for any reason, like can 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 Mr. Y, the the brother-in-law overseas, prove that you know, you know there was hardship when he left yeah, the country. I mean, yeah. Regardless, he's going to have to explain what happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'd get yeah. I'd get all those medical records and I'd be ready to explain it for sure. Yep, for sure. That we can do that, and that's not. But, um, yeah. So I think he's just waiting on his. Uh, the, the the, I mean, it, it's possible to do the biometrics at a U.S. embassy, right, outside the country. How long ago was that 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 happened? 
we we he he didn't know, but so uh, I'm not too sure, but I um, just forgot. But is it possible for him to apply for an I-131 outside the country? Generally, no. Generally, you have to be in the United States to apply for the I-131. Yeah. I see. So his best bet is to wait for the green card to get printed and then come back on the green card. I like, would try. Apply. That's what I would try. Oh. With the medical records. I see. We can uh, do that. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, oh, and and here's one more question before I go. Um, what is this person's person's chances of being readmitted back to the country to, to the U.S. knowing that he left four weeks after uh, being stepped at the border with an immigrant visa? I don't know. Less than fifty percent. Less than fifty percent. I would say. Would they turn the person back and put them on the plane, or they were allowing them in to go? Yeah. Would they put him back on the plane, or? Mm -hmm. Make him pay for it. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Then he has to go and apply for an SV one. Come back. Mm -hmm. Which is why you might want to do that ahead of time. So. Get out in front of it. So is the better thing to do is to come back to the U.S. and apply for the I one thirty one, or to apply for SV one? Well, if he comes back to the United States and he doesn't need the reentry permit. Okay. Well, my my worries my worry if it's, if it, if USCIS is going to print the green card or not. That's that's my yeah, worry. Wait and see. Yeah. All right, Darren, Jim, been a great help. Thank you very much. I don't know about that. I don't think day. it was a great help, but you got it. See you, see you, Ron. Thank you. All right, that was confusing. Let's talk to Sam. Hi, Sam. Hey, what's up? How are you? Good, sir. How are you? Good, thanks. Hey, so uh, me and my wife uh, went for our Stokes interview on 1st September of 2021. Where? Uh, New York City. Mm -hmm. So we got approved the next day, the I-130. The I-130. So we got the approval letter, but still it's we are waiting for the I-485. What, no, what happened at the Stokes interview? It went very well. Just one question wrong. What issue? So they believe the marriage. Yeah. So what? What do we think is holding them up? Why? Why do we think the beneficiary might be inadmissible? No, I'm the beneficiary, and there is no. I have no criminal record, no, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. How about uh, unauthorized work or unauthorized stay? Nope. 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 What are you adjusting from a student visa? Uh, uh, uh tourist visa. B one B two. And. What uh, when you got your tourist visa? Where which embassy gave you your tourist visa? India. And what did you tell them was the purpose of your visit? I was here on uh, vacation. Okay. And how long after you arrived did you get married? Almost six months. And did you know the person that you married before you entered the no, United States? No, no. So you come on a six-month visit visa. You get married at five and a half months. Mm -hmm. You file the I one thirty. Did you have two interviews or one interview? Two. So the first interview is just sort of very pro forma, very quick, and then they call you back for a Stokes interview. So let me tell you my timeline. We we filed on March of 2019. March of 2019, like three, almost three years ago. Okay. COVID hit. Nothing happened. Right. Well, COVID, yeah. was, a year, COVID was a year after that. Yeah. So I don't know. I got my EAD and at that time, but... My interview was scheduled on Mar on February oh, on March of 2021, the first one. Then, then they said they will tell me. Then six months later, they sent me the Stokes interview letter. I got. Then we get went to the Stokes interview. We got approved. I don't know. And still waiting for the 485. Well, my brother, there's something they don't like. I don't know what it is. I mean, that's almost six months ago. Yeah. There's something. Maybe somebody sent a bad letter about you or something. There's something in the file that they don't like. There's some reason that they're holding this back. I mean, getting married on a visit visa, that's not the biggest thing in the world. Were you married before? No, no, no. Okay. I don't know. I just, I, I guess you got to just keep waiting or you could sue them. You've waited long enough. That's for sure. Should I sue them? Maybe. Okay. It'll get you a decision. I just don't know what the decision will be. Thank you. You're welcome, Sam. Good luck, buddy. Keep us posted. Let us know what happens, okay? Thank you. Okay. All right. See ya. All right. Got a funny comment from Diodane Montplacier. Jim is too good to us. Some people need a consultation. 
This is true. And you'll notice yesterday there were some people, and even one today, who doesn't want to listen. There's people who get on here and they don't want to listen. So, you know, you're free to do whatever you want, but some things can't be answered on a free call-in show. So Diadone is correct. All right. Awesome. What's up, Awesome? Hi, Jim. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Hello. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me tonight. Hello. What can I help you with? Well, I have, I have a question for you. So I have been convicted with a felon in 2017 only once. And I didn't get any jail time. So I'm planning to visit the state in the, in the coming days. And I don't know if I could, if I should submit the felony uh, in my form or not. So, so you're overseas? Yeah, I'm overseas. And you got a conviction for a felony in your home country? Yes. And you want to apply for what, a visit visa? A small one. I. No, uh, I don't know. I didn't. I haven't decided yet. But uh, does it? What's does so? What do you? Matter? you what do you want to ask me? What? What do you? What do? You, what do you want to do? So, shush. Did I tell them about the felony that I have did? Of course. It's a very small thing. It's. Uh, well, that's not for you to decide. That's, that's for them to decide. They don't like shoplifting charges. Yeah, so I have to tell them about it. Of course. It's only once I haven't did any jail time. Uh, I, yeah, but, but awesome. I most went out visit, with a bill. Most visit visas are denied. Most visit visas are denied, especially okay. for people... Especially for people so, between the ages of 20 and 35, because they think you're going to come get married. So I don't think there's any okay. way they're going to give you a visit visa with a shoplifting conviction. You can try. Okay. So my goal. Don't get your hopes. Don't get your hopes. No, my, okay. So my girlfriend is living in the state currently. She's a U.S. citizen. Uh, we are planning to get married. She. She. She wants to come here to Jordan, and we, we're planning to get married. Then I want to apply for for a visa or for a green card. So I have to I have to tell them about my family, uh, my family. So uh, was is it going to be a problem or, or what? In I mean, that case, shoplifting. I mean, in in America, shoplifting is not a felony. It's a misdemeanor. It's a smaller crime. Are it, are you sure it's a felony? Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's the felony in my country. I mean, it's not gonna, it's not gonna make your case and easier. It. It, it's gonna be harder to get it approved. Right? I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but it's gonna be harder. They're not gonna like it. Even, even if I get married to to someone, or I got, I won the lottery. Let's say. Yeah, both those. Yep. Yeah. I mean, they're, yeah. again, it's the same thing. Do we want to let a felon into the United States? You say it's a small thing. Yeah, in their book, in their book, they already want to deny you. You're you're an Arab man from Jordan. They already don't want you to come, and now you gave them a perfect reason not to let you come. Oh yeah, that's right. So, what do you advise me to do? Take your shot. Get married. File the case. See what happens. Okay. Thank you so much, Jim. That's All right. Good luck, Awesome. It. There's our friend Rocio. She's still watching. She's glad it's February. We're still going strong. I like to be patient with people. No reason to get mad. You guys have seen me get mad every now and then. I try not to. I try to be a little patient. Let's talk to Zishan. Hi, Zishan. Uh, hi, Jim. I have a question, a very good question. Uh, how long you have to stay with your employer after you get the green card? Is it a rule or some rude written or just oral thoughts people have? I think it's like seven and a half years, right? You can. 
Okay. No, there's no there's no hard and fast rule. It's not a it's not a um, you know it has to be done by this day. It has to um, you have to stay six months. The, the, there's, there's always only two questions. The first question is, do you have a contract with the employer by which they said, "Hey, if you spend money on if we spend money on getting you your green card." you promise to stay for a certain amount of time. So one, one is you have to check to see if you have a contract with the employer. If not, then it's um, the, like a reasonable standard. And, and remember, this is going to be when you apply for your citizenship. So like the other day I had a guy on and he was wanting to leave his employer because the employer basically had him on the shelf and had no work for him. Right. So um, if you have a good reason for leaving, that helps your case. But generally, I think if you don't have a good reason, I would say staying six months is a good benchmark, but there's no hard and fast rule. It just got it just can't look like you got the green card and then got the heck out of there. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's all about intentions, right? So, right. Uh, for example, if you get a very good offer, which has uh, growth and a good industry, everything, it's just about a better living and better job other than just like no other reason. So do we have to explain it after the 10 years when we'll re, uh, renew our green card? We have to explain that thing or it's only comes at the citizen. Yeah, I don't think no, the green card, they're not going to ask you about that and you're not going to have an interview for that. OK. All right. Thank you very much. All right, Zeeshan, sure thing. Oh, Precious is wondering how the president of Hacking Immigration Law TikTok is doing. That that gives me a perfect reason to bring back uh our announcement from yesterday. Let me see if I can upload it. Here she is. My name what? is Nora Hacking, and I am the director of TikTok at Hacking Immigration Law. Um, we have a new TikTok channel called Immigration Hacking, where we will be posting a video every day about immigration like we do on YouTube. But um, this one will be shorter and it'll be more fun. So follow us on TikTok, um, Immigration Hacking, and have a great day. So she, uh, just so you guys know, she practiced that like um, five times. She kept saying immigration, hacking immigration instead of immigration hacking because she, that's just how she rolls. But she wanted to shoot that. And we did. She's, she's very excited. We went from 20 TikTok subscribers to almost 60. So um, you guys are coming through for us. She's very happy. And she uh, is recruiting her friends. And we made another TikTok last night. It's sort of fun because she i keep trying to do like immigration stuff and she goes no that's like your youtube she says she says tiktok's just for fun so don't be don't be being a boring lawyer she wants me to do more fun stuff so whether or not i'll dance i don't know probably not you guys don't want to see that but let's get back to the show and talk to robin hi robin hi good afternoon mr Joe. how you doing I'm okay. I got a question I would like you to answer. I sponsored my wife, right? And everything is processed and finished with. And it's at NVC. And it's been since day, since August the 27th, 2020. And they, she haven't gotten an appointment yet. This is a case going to Guyana. G-U-Y-A-N-A. -A. In South America? Yes. I used to think it was in Africa, but now I know it's in South America. Yes, yes. <laughs> it gets okay. confused with Ghana. I don't know why. I mean, that must be the Because there's, there's, there's Ghana and Gambia in Africa. Guyana, and Africa. Right. And Guyana in South America. Yes. So what's the question? Okay, the question is, uh, what can I do about that scenario? It's, it's process. Everything is okay. And it's at NVC waiting for an appointment date from the embassy. And it's there for over a year and a half right now. I mean, the thing is, we love we love Guyana. Guyana has saved our butt for clients from Cuba, clients from Venezuela, and clients from Chile. So we really like the embassy in Guyana. Um, that being said, a year and a half is a really long time. You might want to sue them. Uh, how do I go about doing that? About suing them? Yeah. Yeah. So I would say um, either call our office and ask to talk to Daniel or email us and I'll put all that contact information um, here in the comments. Um, and you can either call or ask for Daniel and then he'll he'll help you, he'll tell you all about it. Okay, okay, I'll do that. Okay, I, can I get your number please? Uh, I, 
It's 314-961-8200. I'm putting it in the chat right now. Okay. Okay. All right, Robin. Good luck, my friend. Okay. Oh, that was fun talking to Robin. Um, all right. So, Rocio had a comment. More fun. Your dad is fun on YouTube. Oh, I don't know. I think a lot of people think this show is pretty boring, but I don't get it. Um, yeah. Oh, Georgia says, time to dance. There, There's an old video of me dancing in this very office once. I was completely fried, and I was listening to James Brown, and I was dancing around. That was like the one TikTok I had, but that was on the old channel. We got rid of that one. So, um, all right. So we got time for a couple more calls. Remember, if you're in the waiting room and you want to come on, you got to be on camera. If you're not on camera, I won't know that you're there, and, and it just doesn't make for good television for me to pull you up. Looks like Mufasa is back with another question. Hi, Mufasa. Hello, Jim. How you doing? I'm doing good. Um, and I just want to ask about yesterday. I I went back and talked to my uh, to my friend about the question and everything, and yeah. I kind of asked him a quick question before he come to you. I asked him about because he this is his uh, second marriage, and mm. I tried to ask him, you know, um. As the divorce of the first one, because you know there's a lot of video I sent to him to see your performance and your review. So yeah. before they first visit a lawyer, and I was like, he doesn't know what the heck he's doing. He's better <laughs> don't don't even know start. You know, I never right. have complained about any of my friends I introduced to you. So I told him that um, you know watch this video. Then he came back to me. We go online, search for the um, the case number of the divorce. We actually saw it. Um, is the wife that do it, that is the petitioner, but it shows rejected on the online, which means but they gave him a copy of of according uh, that the, the the divorce has been settled. So he went ahead last year October. I even though I attended the wedding, we have a whole big church wedding and everything was perfect. But really now, last night we check when we pull it out. Is showing that the divorce wasn't um, rejected. So this means it's not this thing. He called the lawyer, um, like the ex is not picking he, the lawyer name that was there. He tried to reach out, he's not getting there. So I told him, I said, okay, let me talk to Jim. Let me see the advice he can give you. But I think you might need to remarry your wife back. They don't well, have to is, remarry, but they don't know what to do. Is your friend in the United States or outside the United States? United States. They yeah, so what? Your friend, your friend is indeed starting over. What he needs to do is file for divorce here for the spouse overseas. There's a way to do it. It takes a while. No, that, both of them are here. Both the wife and the husband, they are here. They right, I understand. I understand. But the, the, the first wife is back home in the home country, right? Yes. So before he marries the new wife, he has to divorce that first wife. He, he's still not free to marry. He already married in October. It does, it does, that's not a valid marriage. Okay, so how do they go about it now? So first of all, you should have him call me and we can talk about it. But basically, he needs to find a – like, let's say he lives in Boston. I don't know where he lives. Let's St. say – oh, in St. Louis. Okay, then I know – I know I've know. i already done this with people. So have him have him email Daniel. Have him tell him I, that I'm Mufasa's friend and I need to get divorced in my home country. I, I know I, – I have a guy who can do it. His name's Steve Bartle. He can set it all up, get get divorced. You've got to like publish it to the world that you're getting divorced. So it's it takes a little longer, but it's more reliable than that divorce that never went through. And then after that, then he can marry spouse number two. Okay. So did he need to divorce his marriage that he married in United States or they just... No, because that's not a valid marriage. So they just um do like um divorce no, number one and then remarry number marry number two for the first time and the, the new marriage will be their official marriage today. Okay, so the whole one is like it has it hasn't happened. Well, you gotta you gotta pay attention to it and you gotta account for it and explain things, but you, you, it it has no legal merit. Okay, okay, I'll ask him to do that. Yeah. Thanks, Mufasa. Thanks for Thank trying you. to send people my way. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye bye. See you, buddy. All right, we got time for two more, I think. Let's talk to Jolie. Hi, Jolie. Hi, hi, Jim. Thank you for picking my call. Okay. I, um, uh, I am the two-year green card, and um, I and my husband would love to adopt my nephew from Vietnam. He's a 10 years old right now, and he stay with his um, 
natural parents they are healthy just because of low income so i would bring i and my husband would love to bring him here to give him a better future so how we can do that i think that's really hard to do you would have to go to a court in vietnam and have the parents rights terminated for him to then become an orphan and then you'd have to formally adopt him i don't think immigration is going to go for it Mm -hmm. because they know that you're just doing it to bring him here to the United States and they don't like that. So mm -hmm. you can try it, but don't get your hopes up. It's probably not going to happen. Okay. So is it the idea, for example, I will uh, let him go here to study by a liar student first, then he stay with us for two years later. So is it any chance? I think this is a bad plan. I would not put too much energy into this. I think it's just going to cause problems. They mm -hmm. don't really like people. I mean, if he were a true orphan, if his parents were deceased, that'd be one thing. But when they see you trying to do it to get him a benefit in the United States, then they think you're just doing it for an immigration benefit and they won't recognize it as a valid relationship. You can try it. And I think there's even some immigration lawyers that might specialize in this, but we don't, we don't handle those kinds of cases. Wow, that's a like impossible case. But yeah. anyway, thank you so much for your advice. Thank sure, you. Joey. Have a good day. See ya. Thank you, you too. All right, let's talk to Zara. Last call of the day. Hi, Hi. Zara. Hi, Jim. How you doing? How are you? Great. I'm good, thank you. Uh, I want to ask you, um, I want to send my birth, the birth certificates of my kids in my I-751. Uh, mm -hmm. And how uh, can I use the printer or do I have to... Um, um, have a certificate from uh, some some somewhere else no you can just send copies for now they don't need the originals or they don't need certified copies for now they just need as long as they're as long as were they were they are they from the united states or are they from overseas no no they they was they were born here yeah i would just send them color copies of what you have uh, so no i don't have the copies yet i just have oh, the you don't original, have anything. original oh. ones yeah yeah well just no i'm saying go to kinko's make a color copy of the originals and then you're good to go I, with the printer yeah yeah i mean if you want to you could pay for a certified copy they're probably 20 bucks a piece if that makes you feel better you can but i would just make a copy of the original in color and send it off with the application oh, okay that's perfect that's perfect and one other question if it's possible um sure. I, i don't know if we have a lot of evidence me and my husband and um My two daughters, we want to go to Italy. I, I told you, you know, if I, I don't know if you don't remember. Uh, we want to go back to Italy to see my family. Um, the thing is, uh, we have a lot of pictures and a lot of, um, we have our cell phone um, with both yeah. names, with the leads, with both names. Um, the thing is, I don't know, um, I don't have a, like a joint bank account because they asked me for an ID and I don't have an American ID. I have Italian ID and they didn't accept that. So we don't have, a, um, and we just moved in this, this state. We moved to out of state. So you're talking about filing an original I-130 and a 45? Is that what you're talking about? Like you're in the United States and you want to adjust? Is that what you're talking about? No, uh, we, we want to file the I-751. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So that's different. So you've been married for two years. Yes. And you have a green card. And you have a social security number. Yes. And you haven't opened a bank account together. We have everything together, but the only thing we don't have is a joint bank bank account. Okay, but why? Because uh, my husband, the last time he went to the Chase Bank, they he's the, they said uh, they can accept uh, me uh, to for uh, to be in his bank account because uh, I don't have an ID and I don't have um, an ID. I don't know why. Why don't you have an ID? You have a green card. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I have a green card. They didn't accept. Okay, so. All right. When is your when is your seven fifty one due? Oh, uh, April in April. April is the first day you can file, or the last day you can file. Excuse me. Yeah. Does your green card expire in April, or does it expire in June? No, it expires in April. Now is um uh, already so in the ninety days. You're in the ninety days. Yeah. Well, this is unfortunate. I mean that that's sort of a problem that you you guys should have gotten yourself a driver's license or a state ID and open up a joint bank account two years ago. Doing it now isn't going to carry much weight. Have, have you and your spouse had kids? Yes, we have two kids. So I would say that, I mean, obviously that's the best evidence of all, but I would say that I would wait to file until April 1st and I would do whatever it takes to open a joint bank account and start using that bank account for the next two months. 
So I have to I, make a bank account. Yeah. You got to have a bank account. You got to have your name on it with your spouse and you got to use it. Yeah. I want just it every it. time we want, we want to do that, you know, because. Um, well, but see, Chase, 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 Chase is a huge bank. They have all these rules. Find a smaller bank. Oh, yeah, or, that's credit, or credit union. Yeah. But, or if you just get a state ID, you should be fine. Okay. So I, how can I get the state, state ID? Um, you just go to the where they issue the driver's licenses. Okay, perfect. Okay, that's perfect. And just real quick, okay. uh, our friend Diadone says, as a former Chase worker, Chase will take your passport and your permanent resident card. So I would just try another branch or something. They probably just don't want to deal with it. They're just being lazy. Okay, that's good. Thank you so much for your help. You're welcome. You're welcome, Zara. Keep us posted. All right, everybody, that'll do it for today's show. We went for about 55 minutes. Don't forget to follow us on TikTok. You'll make Noor happy, the Norinator, at immigration hacking at immigration hacking thank you much and we will be back tomorrow what time tomorrow let's take a look do do do, do. two o'clock central 2 p.m central we will be live with you for a full hour from two to three tomorrow answering all of your immigration law related questions thanks everybody have a great day